Studentpreneur, the podcast about students who are entrepreneurs. Get motivated and keep your energy high. Stories from Studentpreneurs. Welcome to this new episode of Studentpreneur Podcast. My name is Julian Marchin, entrepreneur turned PhD student. Each week, I bring you the best of those individuals who are students and entrepreneurs. I call them Studentpreneurs. Make sure you subscribe on your podcast player or on our website, studentpreneur.com.au to get all episodes. This week is a very special episode since I am interviewing one of my inspirations for Studentpreneur, Jordan Agoli from Teenage Entrepreneur Podcast. In this episode, he reflects about all the successful entrepreneurs who share the tips from when they were teenagers. Check this out. All right, today we've got uh, Jordan Agoli uh, with us. This is a very special episode because um, Jordan is uh, one of my inspiration for starting uh, this podcast. So Jordan uh, started a, a podcast called uh, Teenage Entrepreneur. He'll tell us um, about it just in a minute. Uh, Jordan is from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and in, is in his early 20s. And um, Jordan dropped out of university to start something different. So he'll tell us about it. But right now, I'm going to play his intro for his podcast. If you've ever been told that you're too young to start a successful business, then you're in the right place. Teenage Entrepreneur features rock star entrepreneurs sharing their stories from when they were your age, experiencing the same struggles and jumping over the same hurdles. Get ready to inspire, educate, and take action with your host, Jordan Agoli. So Jordan, that's a lot of images that we just heard. Do you want to introduce yourself, what you do now, and what you plan on doing? Yeah, man. First off, I want to say thank you for having me on the show. I, I really just love being here. And I'll give a, a quick background and introduction. I started my first business when I was 14 years old. It was a pressure washing company with one of my best friends. And then later on, moved into landscaping. My friend started the company. I came on a little bit after it started and we grew the company together to, I'm sorry, it was a landscaping company and we grew the company to 120 uh, clients and 20 employees and just really grew it significantly. He was 18, I was 17 and we learned a lot about business at that time. And after that, I sold the part of the business that I owned back to him and bounced around for a little bit, did a random odd jobs here and there. And then had the idea to start the podcast, Teenage Entrepreneur. And that was really to build a community online to help the younger entrepreneurs learn from people that have had previous success and learn about their story. Because it's not always the tips and tricks. Sometimes people just need to hear, hey, I was confused and I know you're confused too, but this is what I went through and this is how I achieved my success and uh, did that. And I I ran the podcast for quite a while and the podcast currently is on hold. I got a a really cool opportunity from a mentor of mine to uh, manage the operations for his marketing company. And I chose to go down that direction right now because I knew it would really put me into a lot of difficult business situations that would help me grow quickly. And so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm 20 years old and just getting started. So it's an exciting time. Excellent. Yeah. When you said you've been on the podcast for a while, you've um, you've got almost 40 episodes and you have a very, very um, big diversity of um, interviewees, uh, people with dyslexia, people with great sense of adventure, successful entrepreneurs, and they all, a lot of them reflect back on how they were as teenagers. Which is, it's a really good take on, you know, my audience trying to understand them as they were when they were younger. So that's, that's pretty cool. So I really recommend the podcast. You said you wanted to start an online community, but what went through your mind? Because, you know, you, you just decided to, um, to leave university and you wanted to do something different. So like, why a podcast? Because, you know, there's not much money in podcasts. So why is this sense of community? You know, I ask myself that question quite a bit. I think back to the beginning and I really don't know what caused me to to start the, like have the idea for the podcast. I remember, so I live in Atlanta, Georgia in the United States and I would visit my girlfriend. She lived probably an hour and a half away uh, because she was, she's in college right now. So Every time I drive to her, I didn't want to just use that hour and a half to listen to music. I wanted to, to be productive, so I'd listen to podcasts. And you know, eventually, like every podcaster says, one day I ran out of episodes, so I started my own show. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of like that, but I realized that no one was hitting the niche of giving advice 
to a younger generation. And, and what I pinpointed was there's a ton of business advice out there, but what really inspires me, and now I know a lot of other people, is take a successful entrepreneur in his 40s. When a younger individual looks at that man or woman, all they see is success. What they don't see is 25 years prior, that man and woman was a, was a child not knowing what they were doing, making mistakes, losing money, not being successful. And then over time and over a lot of success and failures, they got to where they were today. So that's what I really wanted to know. You know, what's the true behind the scenes story of how you got where you are today? And it was for myself to get advice, but it was for other people because I knew, hey, I could interview these people by myself and keep them on my MacBook and no one could ever listen, or I could share it with the world. And that's what I wanted to do. And also the power of a community is limitless. It really is limitless. I've met people from almost every continent in the world now that have been a part of Teenage Entrepreneur, and it's just been a wonderful experience. Uh, it's very powerful what you say about not just being business advice and not just being about uh, successful people is because you make those people sound normal, basically. When, you know, when they talk exactly. about their <laughs> the teenage... And that's what they we, are. They're human beings. That's right. That's all. <laughs> exactly. All right. Otherwise, it's just too scary. Like, it's like mm -hmm. everybody gives you the example of Steve Jobs, and like, but I'm not like him. Like, I'm diff like, it's just too scary to be like him. So it just makes it more real. And I think these, um, like the new generation coming out, like they're not going to have long-term jobs. It's not because they finish university, they're going to have a job. They need to learn to be entrepreneur. And that's, it doesn't come by doing an entrepreneurship class, really. Exactly. And, that, and that's why I had them on the show. Awesome. So what did you personally learn from all the person that you've, you've interviewed? Because you've, you've got a lot of wealth just into you. So what do you remember from them? I'd have to say what I learned the most from everyone that I had on the show is that majority of the time, not one person knew what they were doing. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I mean that in a, they did not make excuses because a lot of times people say, I don't have enough money. My skill set is not enough. I'm not a good enough speaker. I'm not a good enough salesman, woman. It, it's a load of crap. They all got started. They all figured it out. And not one of them knew what they were doing. Nobody was perfect and they still don't always know what they're doing, but that's part of the entrepreneurial spirit. They chose to take a risk and half the time you learn as you go, you know, you don't know what you don't know until you know it. And when I started a podcast, do you know that I did not know how to edit audio? I didn't know how to work a mic. I didn't know that's right. how to do anything. And or to reach did, out to people or to reach out. I had no idea how to do any of this, but what I did know how to do was find people in my community that knew how to do it. So one of my best friends, he was also on the show. He's a well-known musician. He knows all about you know technical audio stuff. So I said, hey, Vance, can you help me, man? I have no idea how to make my audio sound good. And he showed me how to do it and I learned how to do it. My mentor, who I now work for, Jeff, I said, Jeff, I have no idea how to build a website. Can you help me, your company help me? Now I know how to do that. Other people, how to reach out and ask for interviews. Now, not only do I know how to, I bet you I could get anybody on the show, I know how to talk to anybody and ask questions all the time. I can hold a conversation for an endless amount of time all because of this, but I had no idea how to do it when I started. I remember I would sit in my room for hours at a time doing practice interviews, talking to the wall because I was nervous about doing an interview, but at some point I just had to do the interview and my first ones, I don't really think are that great and they got better and better. Well, we all have to learn, right? Exactly. exactly. So, so what you're saying basically is that, you know, you started a venture, the podcast, with the idea of you building a community and not really the idea of like making a ton of money. But what you got out of this is how to leverage the people around you and how you manage to learn new skills from them. And not just for the podcast, right? I mean, you probably use those skills now in your job now, correct? All every single day, every, every single, single day. day. And you, you brought up something good, which was uh, the making money side of it. So before the interview, Julian, you and I were talking about John Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire. Oh, yeah. For people, for people that don't know, he's got a great podcast. He's been very, very successful financially. He posts his income reports each month, hundreds of thousands of dollars each Crazy month. Crazy income. He's the top 1% of podcasters. Correct. I, I barely made any money off of my podcast in the last year. But what I did get, which is a million times more valuable than money, I gained knowledge That's and experience right. through that. And I know... For everybody listening, that may sound really cliche and oh, that's lame. Our teachers and parents say that. Let me tell you something. I can now, if I go anywhere now, nobody's going to ask me, hey, you know, how much money did you make off of this? They're just going to be impressed by the fact 
that I know how to handle myself in business yes. situations, hold conversations with people, and not yeah. be afraid to put myself out there. And you put yourself out there and opportunities happen to you. Like, Can you tell um, your story about you being invited to Babson College and what happened from that? Yes, I will. And it's, I'll try and I've been working on keeping it short because it's such <laughs> okay. a long story. So I'll, I'll do my very best. Okay. So I had a gentleman on my show named David France. He runs a uh, nonprofit that teaches violin to inner city kids in Chicago. Great guy. Love what he's doing. He came in my show. We hit it off. We became friends. We would talk. And he was invited to speak at Babson University at their annual Babson Entrepreneurship Conference. So he connected me with the program director there. And for people that don't know, Babson is a college in the United States in Boston. That's the number one entrepreneurship school. Yeah, that's, that uh, is. Yep. In the United States. It's, it's an incredible school. So he introduced me to the program director. She invited me up there, paid for uh, travel and stay. To nice. Do six interviews at the conference, which side note, don't ever do six interviews in one day. It's too tired. <laughs> but <laughs> so I went to Babson hit it off with everybody there. Wonderful time. Even met a few billionaires at one of the conferences. We had a, 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 a black tie dinner. It was, um, it was very cool. Like just really great guys. And as the conference was ending, I was walking, uh, walking out of the building. It was completely empty. And there was a woman next to me walking up the stairs. She looks in her late forties, early fifties. And I strike up a conversation with her. Why? Because I talk to people all the time because of the podcast. I'm not because afraid of the podcast, to, that's right. I'm not afraid to talk to people. So I'm asking her, hey, do you enjoy the conference? We're talking, we're talking. And she finds out all about my podcast. She's really interested. All of a sudden, she asks for my information. And when I write down my name, she sees my last name is a goalie. And then I, she's like, hey, is a goalie, is that an Italian last name? I say, no, it's an Albanian last name. And she freaks out. She's like, Albanian, Albania, this is crazy. You, you won't believe this. And in my mind, I'm like, what in the world is this what lady is talking doing? about? <laughs> yeah, she's, she's crazy. She hands me her phone and it was an email from the Albanian embassy or the US embassy. And it said, dear Karen, we need your assistance in choosing two young entrepreneurs from the United States to come to Albania to teach two entrepreneurship boot camps to our high school students. So- I'm oh freaking my out. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the government. <laughs> it's, you know, the country of my ancestors. That's this, right. is, this is not even possible. Okay. So I don't even think it's real, but she is the, then it turns out she's also happens to be the director of the global entrepreneurship forum for the United States. No big deal or anything. Nice. Like this, woman just, <laughs> this woman just runs entrepreneurship for America. It's awesome. And so then she tells me, she's like, Jordan, I really like you. I'm going to put your name in to be selected. Now, I've had things happen like this before, but they never came to fruition because it's always too good to be true. Yeah, it's true. Two, it's week, true. two weeks later, I am uh, at the airport with my family. I get an email. Boom. It's from the United States Embassy saying, Jordan, you've been invited to Albania. <laughs> so all expenses paid. They paid me to go. I met hundreds of people over there. I met the U.S. ambassador to Albania. I uh, was on TV there, did two boot camps. Just an unbelievable experience. Why? All because of starting a podcast. That's crazy. You interviewed Dave France, who is like, your only intent was to interview him and to share his, his story. And yeah. then you happened to be a few months later on the plane <laughs> to Albania, like the country of your ancestor. <laughs> it was wild. Wow. It was just an unbelievable experience. But you know, when you interview um, young entrepreneurs, that, that is not as wild as it is. Like it just happens. It's, that's what happens when you start doing what you want and then when you start putting yourself out there. So it's, it's, just a, it's, a, it's still a great story though. Like it's, it's amazing. Thanks, man. Thank you. And I appreciate you letting me share that. Yeah. And it, but it just goes to show when I started my podcast in, I started working on it in January of 2014. If you asked me one year later, would I be on a plane to Albania? <laughs> I would have laughed in your face. I would have said, there's no way. There's no way. But that's why you can't put a price on it. I mean, like this type of experience, that's so much better than a paycheck. Yeah. And, and I got paid really well to go on that trip. Oh. And, <laughs> but that's the thing. And the thing is, I don't think about, when I think about that trip, I don't think about the money. No, they, exactly. It paid me uh -huh. really well. And I don't think about the money. I think about the hundreds of people that I met. 
like 75 of them just graduated high school last week. And so I congratulated all of them. And it's nice. just, it's special, man. It, it, we built lifelong friendships. How was the environment there? Because, you know, like you're from, from the US and so entrepreneurship is vibrant over there. But, you know, we've interviewed people from a lot of countries where it's not vibrant. So how is it in, Al in Albania? Definitely growing. It growing. definitely is growing. Yeah, I think it's up and coming, I will say. It, you know, it's not like America by any means for entrepreneurship. But given another mm, five, 10, 15 years, and it's it's really going to be steady. Did you find they had that creativity mind? Say that, did they have a creative mind? Yes, because, um, you know, very, very often, um, like education just kills our creativity. But over there, did they still have a lot of creativity in them? They really did. I was ah. very impressed with the creativity. And, and deeper than that, they were very focused on fixing social issues, for example. Uh, social issues, ah. Oh not even social issues, like community issues, issues to better the community. One of them was there was a lot of car bombings hap happening and one of them wanted to build a sensor underneath the car that would track if any bombs were nearby or bombs were going to go off. Like really, really cool stuff where it's not even something we have to worry about in the United States. No, exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was really fascinating. Talk about addressing a problem and a need. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a different level. So can you tell us how you've been learning um, in your life? Like, so you said, you know, you go to your friends, to your community to learn how to do things. Is there other ways that you recommend on, on doing, like reading books, listening to podcasts, reading blogs? What do you have in mind? Yeah, you know, it depends on the time of my life. I'm not sure about you, Julian. I go through different stages. Sometimes I will be obsessed with reading books and I'll read tons of books just all the time. Then I will stop for six months and I'll only listen to podcasts. And I won't read, I'll just listen to podcasts and then I'll quit listening to podcasts for a little while. Then I'll watch business TV shows, documentaries, business movies, be obsessed with those. Then from there, I'll kind of start the cycle again. So, you know, right now I don't really do, I don't listen to podcasts that much right now. I don't, I don't read too many business books. Right now I'm really focused on putting myself in difficult business situations and learning from them, which Sounds like a scary thing to do, but when you're around people all the time and you're in the real world, you just have to watch and listen and learn and, and see how people act. So that's probably my main one right now, which is really just going in it. Do you want to yeah. elaborate on that one? Like, do you want to just give us an ex a recent example and how you put yourself in that type of situation? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, we didn't prepare no, that. <laughs> no, you're, you're good. You're good. Okay. All right. Here's a good one. So I was with uh, my boss, Jeff, and we were going to be going, we were going to be presenting a report on what we did for one of our biggest clients. And it's a, about an eight, nine figure company and they have a board of directors. So we presented, uh, we created this report for them to prove to the board of the directors that what we're doing is working. And I put together all the report and I was going to have Jeff be presenting it. So it's, uh, the board meeting was at 8 AM and Jeff and I were having breakfast at 7 30 in the morning preparing and I'm telling him everything that's going on and he was going to be presenting it. Then he looks at me and he says, Jordan, you know what? You put together this entire report. Why don't you present it to the board of directors? Oh, no! And <laughs> I'm, my heart drops. I'm like, what? The board? They're all 40, 50 years old. Very intimidating. So uh, he's like, yeah, you know, you, you put it together. Go, you go present it. I was very scared, needless to say. But, you know, I prepared for it and I love public speaking. So I said, Jordan, you know, take a deep breath and just Tell, do exactly what you do best. Go up there, connect with them and tell them what they want to hear and what you've produced for them. And that's exactly what I did. And wow. I walk out of that meeting and Jeff said I did a fantastic job and they were very happy. So I was petrified, but yes. they didn't have to know that. So putting myself in those situations. It so would have been it, so yeah. easy to say, no, Jeff, listen, how about I do it next time, you know? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you know no. what? I wanted to, but of course. the worst thing that could happen, Julian, as I stumbled over my words and, you know, they weren't impressed and then Jeff gets up and does it. That's all. That's a good way to, uh, to think about it. But at the, you know, at the same time, you're thinking about, well, that's what his main customer, you know, if what I do will, will that be a problem for my book? But you just yeah. did it. That's, you know, that's a very good example. And that's what happens, what, on a weekly basis? Which one? The This type like, of exercise. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. It does. I do my very best to find those situations. And. How do you rely on your um, supporting environment? Do you have, you mentioned a mentor, do you have tutors, do you have 
community, your parents? Who do you rely on to start the different projects that you've been starting? Who do I rely on for support and advice? Yes. You know, also similar to the last question, it depends on the time in life. You know, when I was much younger, I would actually, no, I, I take that back. It's, it's always been my parents without a doubt. Now it's also uh, my girlfriend. She's been very supportive by my boss, Jeff, and his wife, Katie. They're very supportive of me, different friends. But I'd have to say it's in the last few years consistently, it would be my parents, uh, my girlfriend, and then my, my boss and his wife, uh, Katie, because they understand and they realize that it's difficult. But I definitely, I go to them for a lot of advice. And another piece of advice would be when you are looking for advice out there, only go to a qualified mentor. And what I mean by that, <laughs> yes. what I mean by that is don't ask advice from someone that hasn't done what you're asking them how to do. So it could be for anything in life. If you're asking for relationship advice and the person you're asking hasn't been married for a long time or hasn't been in a successful relationship, they're not qualified. Same with business. If you're asking someone about a business and they haven't run their own business, if you're asking them entrepreneurial advice and they haven't had a successful business, don't ask them. And it's for everything, but people forget that. That's true. Now, in this podcast, we every single time we, uh, we mention the importance of finding a mentor, having a mentor, but we, that's true. We haven't just yet talked about qualifying your, 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 your mentor. So yeah, you say, you know, asking somebody about relationship advice when they haven't been married, but how do you check their qualifications? Um, it's, great, go, yeah. Yeah? it's a great question. I, here's what I'll do. So I'll take relationship because relationships are directly impact your business success. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, I will, let's say I'm struggling with something in my relationship. I will think about who I believe could give me a good answer. Then I look at their relationship. And from what I see, because we don't always know what's going on behind the scenes, but if I look at them and I say, you know, hey, one day I want a relationship like this person has, and I respect what they do in their relationship, then I'll go and ask them. The same way, you know, business, there's got a, a lot of facets of business. There's entrepreneurship, there's operations, there's sales, there's finance. So, you know, I manage operations right now. And on Friday, I met with a vice president of operations for a billion dollar water company. I would never go to him for entrepreneurial advice, but I went to him for <laughs> No, advice. yeah, of course, yeah. I went to him for operational advice and the man's a genius. He, he totally blew my mind. Whereas my father, a very successful entrepreneur, I wouldn't go to him for operations advice. I'd go to him for entrepreneurial advice. So, you know, you just look at what have they done and sometimes they can give good advice in other areas, but you really want to focus on what they're good at. No, that's true. And I think LinkedIn can help because sometimes you meet someone in a networking environment and you don't necessarily know their qualification, but when you check them out on LinkedIn, then it can help you to understand what area they're really good in, really. Yeah, and you can see which other people have supported them. Or like, uh, yes, yeah, correct. Which, yeah, which other people have said, hey, they're good at this too. All right. This is one of the questions I, I like the most is, is there a tough time that you had in your entrepreneurial journey that you want to you want to share with us? Which one? Which day? <laughs> <laughs> Which day of this week? <laughs> oh, man. It doesn't have to end well. <laughs> yeah, I would have to say tough time. You know, there, there wasn't a specific time where, actually, I've got it, all right? Not, something just popped into my mind. When I was a running the landscaping business, mm -hmm. I, you know, we were making good money, uh, a lot of success for a young age. And, you know, as you've listened to my show, I was not interested in going to school and I had so much opposition to my decision to not go of to college, course, yeah. even though I actually did go to college. It was so funny. I went to school, but people knew I'd leave. So they're already pissed off at me to leave, <laughs> even after I hadn't left. But Julian, when I tell you, man, I'd say 99% of the people in my life were against me and oh consistently, wow. consistently gave me a hard time. I mean, it was. It was a very difficult time, man. I had very close family members, friends, loved ones, everybody telling me I was making a mistake, that I wouldn't be able to do anything with my life. All this just nonsense, negativity. I'm talking really close people in my life that I talk to every day would do this. So although that's not, you know, oh, lost a lot of money in business, it's directly impacted on the entrepreneurial journey because everybody disagreed with what I was doing. Now, Everybody shuts their mouth because they realize, <laughs> that, hey, you know, he's doing all right. Like his life hasn't blown up. But you know what, man? Even if I completely failed, lost all my money, lost everything, I still 
would be happy that I did it because at least I took a risk because I can tell you this much. There's a lot of people out there right now that I look at that I know for a fact they're not doing what they want to do because they're too afraid to do it. Or, oh, I'm too afraid of what my parents are going to say or my friends are going to say or, or my family. No, at the end of the day, we have one life to live and life is short, man. You know, one of us could get off this interview and go for a car ride and, and get in a car crash and that, and that could be the end of life. And I don't say that to be so morbid. I just say that to be a reality check. Like, you know, we really don't know how much time we have left. And at the end of the day, when you put it in perspective, it's really not that scary to make a mistake. But without a doubt, to kind of come full circle, it would have to be just the opposition of everyone in my life. And that was consistent. That was for a long time, at probably eight months that lasted, eight to 12 months of everybody being against me. No, but that's really, really awesome that, you know, you kept on with your decision and you went and tried at least, you know, you went and tried and then you decided not to. That's, you know, at least you did what you wanted and you got to where you are now in a different way as other people did it. That's it. I mean, it is, it's really resonate with me when you say, you know, you know, life can change very, very quickly. So you have to make the best of it. My little girl, she's two years old and she was born with, um, with a disability. And now life is really, really hard for her and for us. But it's, life is still beautiful, but you don't know what can happen. Like it's, it can strike you tomorrow. So make the best out of it now. If you don't mind me asking what disability, because my sister was also born with a disability. So I understand. Oh, okay. She has a um, cerebral palsy. Yeah, I can see how that would definitely be difficult. But, it, you know, you bring that up and I bet you guys have now experienced a lot of things in life that you wouldn't have otherwise experienced. Exactly. And it's still a beautiful relationship. It's just a different relationship. It is. And try to take us down. It's impossible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, so, We're but thank, yeah, thanks for sharing that, man. Yeah. You know, you said um, a school wasn't for you and, you know, there's a lot of high school students and university students that are listening and think exactly the same. What do you think high schools or universities should do to help people like us, people who want to do a little, something a little bit different, something entrepreneurial? Let's fix that massive problem right now. <laughs> That's a great question. Let's see. They should fire everybody. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, man, that's, I have a lot of thoughts on that area. My first one would go back to the qualified mentor. I think you've got students going to teachers that have never run a, now, let me backtrack. I want to be careful what I say here. If teachers haven't run a business before, I don't think students should be going to them for advice. I don't think for advice, teachers right. yes. should be teaching yeah. any, yeah. teachers should not teach anything that they haven't done themselves. Okay. So, <laughs> That's going to be limited. <laughs> yeah. Like if you, and it's difficult, but it's true. Like how, how, can a teacher teach something about business if they've never done it themselves? Because when it comes down to it, you know, I could, let's say I've never done public speaking before and I'm trying to give you advice on public speaking. Well, I don't know all the anomalies that can happen in a public speaking environment. People could get angry. People could stop listening. Like, how do you handle that stuff? So it's, it's difficult for people to be teaching something that they've never done themselves. It's, truthfully, man, the school system is a hard thing to change. There's a lot that I disagree with, the, the common core. You've, we've got people learning things that they're legitimately never going to use again in their entire life. It's an absolute joke. We graduated high school and half my class didn't know anything about taxes or mortgage. Yes, or how to More, pay exactly business. mortgage. The one thing they're going to have to get at some stage anyway, yeah, they, and they don't know how to calculate it. Yep. You know, I moved out, so I'm, I'll be 21 in October of this year, and I moved out when I was 19. Let me tell you something. I had to learn so much so quickly. Like, I remember, this is such a funny example. I go into my apartment the very first night and I realized, oh my gosh, apartments don't have toasters in them. I thought they always had toasters. <laughs> they will come with a toaster. Okay. <laughs> Guess what? They don't have toasters, okay? Where was that in school? I couldn't make my bread. <laughs> but, you know, it's simple things such as electricity bills and power bills and, and water bills. The things to live this thing called life that we're never taught, yet we're taught how to do very in-depth algorithms that we're never going to use again. So I would totally scrap all of that and I'd have them give just real life examples. I'd do a lot more internships. I'd, I'd have them. Yeah. And I would, without a doubt, I'd stop. And this may sound crazy. I would stop making everybody feel like a winner because life is not fair and not everybody's the best and not everybody's going to make it. And if you make everybody feel like they're special, the world is like, I believe everybody's unique, but I don't believe everybody has what it takes. And you kind of got to make it harder on them, like make it a little bit harder, you know, participation trophies. I don't believe in those because 
let's say in business, people don't care if you participated. They care if, <laughs> if you did job, like, they care if you did if you get it right. Uh, that's right. That sounds pretty harsh, but I feel like we're as a don't as you a get society, don't you get um, star stickers at work when you do something good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I give out star stickers to everybody, even if they do it wrong. No, I yell at them and say, "Do it better next time." Or you're not going to have a job. <laughs> so I would stop just making everybody feel so good about themselves because that's not what life is about. Life is about making, life is about challenging ourselves. And the thing is, you can, man, you can, uh, you can tell someone's character when put up against adversity. So, you know, you and your family were tested when, uh, when your child was born with cerebral palsy, the same way my family was tested when my sister was born. It's, but it's easy to, to act all happy and, and excited when, and you have a healthy uh, child in your family, but then when something difficult happens, how do you come together as a family and yeah, make the best of it? Same way in in business, but in school. So that would I kind of gave a lot of answers there. Ah, that's awesome. But, that's awesome. it's something that really resonates with with our audience because um, we're trying to find ways out. About a month ago, um, I helped organize a, a startup weekend event. You know, um, like a captain over the weekend, and um, there's no age limit, and we had. Over, there was 100 participants and 10 of them wow. were under 15 of age. And, you know, they were as good, if not better, <laughs> than, the, than the mature um, participants. So, you know, there are events out there. Um, and now we're organizing one just for the, for the youth. So over 18s are not allowed to participate. And we're hoping to have another 100 participants this time. It's, That's so cool, man. It's That's the type really of thing cool. they can do. It, it's out there. Like we can't change maybe the old system but there's a little thing a little thing that we can change and you know you mentioned internships like you know at the end of the day that's up to all of us to go and find internship for ourselves so that's something that we don't have to complain about you know the government not organizing something for us yeah and you know one of my favorite quotes i heard someone say was the day i got what i wanted in my life was the day i stopped waiting around for everybody else to do it for me yeah that's what it comes down to all right, we we um reaching the end of our interview. That's really sad. Is there something, a last thing you want to share with the audience or something you want them to do uh, for you? You know, like I will tell them to listen to a few of your episodes because you might have put it on hold, but there's a f- quite a few gems in your um in your podcast. Yeah, you know, I'd love for you guys to check out the podcast. There's some some great guests on there, and I think we we brought a lot of, as you said, nuggets out of there, gold nuggets from them. First off, I would say I'd love for you to email me. My email is at uh, jordan at teenpodcast, T-E-E-N, podcast.com. And I'm sure Julian will have it in show notes and stuff. But email me. I, I just, I love talking to people. I, I love meeting new people. I'm always here to give advice. I had a gentleman um, ask me a question the other day on an email and it provided a longer answer. So I said, hey, let's get on a Skype call for 15 minutes and I can give you more advice over that. So I'm happy to that's good. That's awesome. Go on Skype. You know, I can't promise the quickest reply. I get probably <laughs> I get probably 75 to 80 emails a day. So crazy. Yeah, it's it's a lot to keep up with. Uh, so I apologize if I don't always get back quickly. But, you know, I'd love to talk to you guys. And past that, I would say, you know, if you are uh, struggling out there about whether you want to do something, I would uh, find someone that has done something similar and ask them how to do it. The best advice I could give is have someone mentor you and uh, do not do this journey alone because yes. it's not a, you don't you don't have to be alone you know there's people out there there's julian there's me there's a million other people that love you and want to help you so we are here that's fantastic thank you so much thank you man thank you so much time to summarize the key points from my chat with jordan agoli he started a couple of businesses in high school then he tried university and decided against everyone else's advice to leave university and he created his podcast, which led him to lots of different opportunities. From all the interviews that he did with almost 40 entrepreneurs, what impressed him is that they did not make any excuses. Nobody's perfect, but they kept pushing. One of his tips is to find people who know what you don't and learn from them. Also, he stresses the importance of qualifying your mentor. Check what is the area of expertise of your mentor before taking all her or his advice for gold. For more tips, check out his podcast, Teenage Entrepreneur. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe on studentpreneur.com.au so you can get a fresh episode every Wednesday. Until then, keep breaking the mindset and the stereotype.